I'm Savannah, this is Cleaver Cooking, and today we are gonna learn how to make a basic stock, which is kind of like the cornerstone of cooking well. If you're gonna be cooking often, it's something you should know, it's really helpful. Saves you a lot of time, money, and it reuses a lot of things that would just get thrown away otherwise, which is lovely. All right, to make a basic stock, um, you need a mirepoix, which is carrots, celery, and onions, okay? You can swap out a few of these. We can get into some more details about what can and can't go in stocks later. But if you're just trying to make a stock, these are the three ingredients that you need that are gonna guarantee it's gonna be good, okay? So, ratios. A pretty good ratio is like two parts onion to one part carrot and one part celery. But I'm gonna be honest, that doesn't always happen, and it's still okay. Now, one of the beautiful things about stock is this is the extent of the prep that you need to do. Like, check if you see a bunch of loose dirt in there. You should probably rinse that off. But other than that, in it goes. Throw the paper in. All the scraps. Celery. So, you could absolutely use all the parts of the celery for this. However, I'm actually gonna use the parts that I wouldn't wanna cook with. And so what I'm gonna do is just come in here We'll actually cut through that, knock off the tops. There we go. Save this for another recipe. And all this shit can go right in. This can also go in, but I'm gonna split it down the middle and just make sure there's not dirt hiding in it. Yeah, we're good. All right, carrots. It's a lot of carrots. That is plenty. And these guys, break them up, throw them in. Boom. Okay, so that'd be the base for a vegetable stock. I'm gonna make a chicken stock today. These are some chicken thigh and leg bones from when I had some chicken thighs and I didn't want them bone in a while ago. They've been frozen, chuck them right in. All right, and so then traditionally with the stock, you'd have your mirepoix, right? Your holy trinity, the carrot, celery, onion. You'd have whatever protein you're using unless you're making a vegetable stock. And then you would add a sachet of herbs. And what that would look like is you get a little cheesecloth. You'd put in a bunch of thyme, some parsley stems, bay leaf, and a little peppercorn. You can tie it up, toss it in there, and that way you can just pluck it right out. We're gonna strain this though, and I don't have all that stuff, so we're just gonna throw one bay leaf in and a little bit of peppercorn. Now the thing with stock is you want stock to be kind of a blank canvas that you then you can turn into like a hundred other sauces or soups or whatever the fuck it is. So we're trying to avoid strongly flavored items in here. So now we're gonna take this and um, we're gonna cover it with cold water. I'm gonna bring the water up to about the little nubbins on these, uh, like the little handles here. And then we'll bring it up to a boil. All right, so burner on high. Now we started with cold water because when you make a stock, um, the idea is that the temperature slowly comes up and it's going to gradually warm the ingredients with it, which just gives you a better, cleaner flavor. Uh, you want a stock to be clear. You want it to be clean. You don't want it to be cloudy and full of like fatty particles. Uh, you just want it to be like crisp, if you will. So that's the reason we start with cold water. Start it on high and we're gonna bring it up um, to a boil. As soon as it starts to boil, I'm gonna turn it down to like just below a simmer. You're almost poaching it. And then we're gonna leave it at that temperature for about four hours. Anytime you're trying to make a stock, regardless of what method it is, give yourself five hours. That includes time to like add the shit in there, get it cooking, and then drain it off at the end. Okay, then you have stock. Now then, let's talk about making stock from leftovers. Like if you don't have a fresh bag of carrot, celery, and a bunch of onions sitting around, what can you put in your stock? What can you not put in your stock? This is my freezer bag. I've always got a freezer bag of stock bits going. And in this, right now I've got like a bunch of onion ends and peels, some carrot peels. What else is in there? That's mostly it right now. I made stock not too long ago, so there's not a ton of stuff. All this shit, I'm gonna dump right into the pot. Ooh, see now more stuff's coming to light. I can see some zucchini ends in there, some ends from some green onions. Yeah. So with the idea of stock being a blank canvas, you don't ever wanna salt it because you wanna be able to control the salt at the end product, whether it's a sauce or a soup. If you've already put a shit ton of salty stuff in there, that's gonna limit what you can do with it. So no salt, your stock should just be a clear blank canvas. 
Um, other things you can put into it. I kind of raided my fridge here. I've got somehow two half of onions that are not from the same onion that were floating around in my fridge. We were a bit low on an onion ratio there, which would be perfectly fine, but I do like to go a little onion. Uh, I like to make sure I have enough onions in my stock. It brings up so much flavor. Stuff it in. A little bit of red onion. You don't want to use all red onion, but a little bit's fine. Some sad carrot ends. Some rotting green onions. Ooh, don't put anything rotty in there. That's not gonna be good. But what we can do is save this and from being an entire waste. Rotty? No. Stems, roots, and all that shit. Fantastic. Now, it's been about 30 minutes, and as Maddie Matheson would say, it's time to skim the scum. All right, so all this little like soap bubbly looking stuff that's coming up here, this is like vegetable and chicken matter. And we want to remove it. That's taking this out is what's gonna give us a nice, clear, clean stock. And not a lot of stuff from the chicken has come up yet. Um, more of that will come along as this continues to cook. But we're almost at a boil. And so this is the process, y'all. Just every like 15, 20 minutes or so, come on in and skim the scum. Oops. It's not gonna be perfect. So if you're the kind of person that like, you know, you're a perfectionist and you have to get every last little bit, this is gonna be a little frustrating. That's good for now. Just let it carry on. All right, let's talk about what you should not put in your stocks, okay? There are a few items, nothing starchy, no potatoes, sweet potatoes, yams, anything of that nature. Think about like when you cook potatoes, potato water is not very nice. Not for this application anyways. Garlic actually should not go in stock unless you specifically want a garlic flavored stock. Uh, on that note, nothing else strong, nothing like uh, fennel your entire stock will taste like nothing but fennel. So unless that's a flavor that you're going for, if you're making it for something specific, cool. If you're just trying to make a stock, eh. Um, nothing spicy. No hot peppers. You might think it's a fun trick to really, I'm, I'm gonna get the chef and put a shit ton of habaneros in there. They won't think it's funny. What else? Nothing cruciferous, nothing broccoli, cauliflower, anything of that nature shouldn't go in there. It'll, it'll cloud it up and it'll smell like feet. It's not really what we want. Other than that, um, yeah, like I probably wouldn't stick rosemary in there, but you can do thyme, you can do parsley stems, cilantro probably not, and that's your basic stock. Now then, nine times out of 10, I'm just making a vegetable stock just because I've always got vegetable scraps around, and I usually do it in the Instant Pot. Um, because you can pressure cook this, you just push the little soup button there and it goes and put all this same shit in there. Uh, and because there's no, animal product in it, it's not gonna get cloudy and gross from the pressure. If you put chicken in here, it'll still taste pretty okay, but you're gonna have kind of a cloudy, like, weird stock. You could also do stock in the slow cooker. Uh, yeah, just leave it on for like 10 hours overnight. It'll probably be delicious. Straight it out in the morning. Same concept though. If you can't skim it, veggie's gonna be your best option for a clean stock. All right, so this is a vegetable stock I made in the Instant Pot a couple of weeks ago. Froze it, thawed it out so y'all could see. You can see it's really clear. Um, it's really nice. It's a little bit lighter of a color because it's just a veggie stock and so carrots are the only thing that are gonna color it. Um, but it should smell good, it should taste good. That's what you're looking for. If you're trying to do a beef stock, um, traditionally what you do is you take your beef bones and some of your vegetables, roast them at like 450 in the oven until they've got like a big, good dark char on them, and then throw them in here. That's gonna add a lot of color and a lot of flavor to your beef stock. Fish stock, same shit as this. Um, if you wanna do something like a pho broth, that's a whole different game. And so you need to look up a recipe for that because you typically would like char your onions and use some specific different spices. All right, so we've come up to a good simmer on here. Now that we're seeing some good bubbles on the edges, I'm gonna turn it down. So we don't wanna see any more activity than this. This is getting a little too excited. Low and slow, my friends, four hours. And then to strain it out, that's what trips a lot of people up. I just get a big ass bowl. Pop this over it, put this down into the sink so that you're not trying to pour it way up here with this big ass heavy pot. Strain it out, drain it off. You can compost the remaining vegetables or throw them in the garbage. Let your stock cool all the way and you can use it for a soup or freeze it. That's it y'all, that is how to make a stock. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to our channel, head to our website to get all the deets on making this in your own home. Hit that like button and leave me a comment if you made your own stock.